Hey, good morning. I am so excited because um, we have finally returned from our trip and I wanted to be able to check in live with you guys because we've also completed our 21 day devotional and so it's a time of transition. It's a time to shift, uh, pun intended, into our new program and so a lot of you may not be trying shift and that's fine but the concept of shift i think is so powerful um from the mental mindset aspect and just also that everything that about chris downing his story um the way that he talks to the challengers as we are working out with him in the workouts um i want to be able to bring some of that to you, um, regardless of whether you're doing that program or not, because it transcends no matter what program you're doing. The message transcends, you know, whether you're doing Pio or you're doing 21 Day Fix or you're doing Insanity or you're doing 22 Minute Hardcore. It, it's not going to matter. It's uh, the 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 words that he speaks. And the message behind them, uh, I believe, is going to speak to you no matter where you're at. So all that to say, um, I'm excited about where we're going with this group. I'm excited that we're going to keep the word. We're going to keep faith involved in our fitness moving forward. So good morning. And as you jump on, please let me know. Uh, tell, tell, shout, tell me hi below or something so I, I know who jumped on, who joined. And, and tell me your thoughts. Tell, shout out below which work, if you're going to try the shift or not, if, which program you're going to do as we transition into the next 21 days. Because the shift itself is a three-week program, which is perfect. But we just finished 21 days of that devotional, and, and I'm ready for a new one. Hey, Michelle. So... I have, um, I'm actually really excited and I'm all pumped up because I got a new devotional. If you follow my page, you may have seen that I was like, oh, new Devo came in. This was an, this one was actually developed from um, a fellow coach teammate. So she's inspiring me uh, to believe God to maybe, uh, you know, maybe he could give me a word to create a whole 30 day devotional um, out of everything that he has worked in my heart through this entire time, you know, from the time that I started to the place I'm at right now. So I want to tell you a little bit about that because from our trip, um, the one thing that I kept seeing over and over and over again, whether it was a, uh, I mean, obviously we were there, we were surrounded by like 20 to 25,000 is the numbers that keep getting thrown out there that attended and we were all coaches, right? So this is definitely not all the coaches in the entire network. There was plenty, plenty of coaches that were not able to be there, but this is like the annual um, event for us to all go to. Um, we have our quarterly events that are local. Um, so if you, um, if you ever wanted to check one of those, there's almost always a live workout, usually with some of the super trainers that you work out with in your home DVD programs. Um, but uh, always being able to connect with others who have experienced transformations and have also decided to take uh, this opportunity and share it with others to pay it forward um, for you know whatever your their motivation is, whether it's financial or whether it's literally just to be able to feed that passion to be able to help others in, in the same empowerment that um, of you know that's what did it for me. I was like, man. As soon as I realized that I really did have control over my my mindset, my waistline, my energy, my health for the first time ever, experiencing that breakthrough, because um, I had tried all kinds of things before, um, but didn't wasn't getting the results that I wanted, and it, I felt like I was you know hitting my head against the wall. And when I was like, "Wow, man, this stuff really works," uh, I was like, "I want to tell everybody about it. I want to share it with this. I, I need to tell my friends about this. I need to share it with other women because there's got to be other moms like me who feel like their body has a mind of its own and they, they can't figure out how to make results happen. And so I was just like, this is what I'm going to do, right? So anyway, so if you ever want to you know, meet some of those people who are in your area, 
I encourage you to go to one of those Super Saturday, or um, for us, it's Super Sunday in Dallas. But anyway, that, that's besides the point. I'm sorry, I'm getting sidetracked because I'm so excited. Okay, so listen, we finished um, our 21 day devotional, and I wanted to ask you how you felt about that. What was what was that devotional like for you? What was like your number one? You know, what was your favorite Devo from the entire 21 days? You know, say hi, Aiden. He's in the background creeping. So, um, you know, for me, the 21 day devotional was something that I picked up early on, um, kind of early on in my journey. And I love to revisit it every now and then because it reminds me of, you know, I think it's great that when you, uh, you know, you read something and then you go back you know, some years later or months later or whatever, and, and you realize you're in a different place in life, you've got different thoughts, different mindset or whatever, and you reread it, like God shows you something new, right? I, I think that's awesome. It's like he's taken the time from then to, to get your spirit to a new place, to comp- renew your mind. All the word that you've been receiving since then has renewed your mind to a new place so that now your spirit man's ready to receive uh, something new that he has for you, which is so awesome. I, th- I think that's why, you know, you can go to church, for, you know, all your life and you can read the Bible all your life and you can continue to pick it up over and over and over again and see something and receive something new every time. So anyway, I like to, I like to personally revisit that 21 day, uh, cross training Devo because it, it reminds me of where I started, yes, but I get something new every time. And one of the things that it did for me from the very beginning was let me know, yeah, physical transformation is a spiritual thing. And so if I don't recognize, you know, all the times that I was struggling prior to that, with getting my, you know, trying to make my transformation happen and it never happened. You know, like I'd be like, oh, look, I have a little mini bicep. I try, you know, I can see a little muscle under there, but yet, uh, why am I not shedding any body fat? Um, you know, why, um, am I still struggling with my eating? Why am I, you know, which sabotages my results, which means my transformation never happens. Why am I still, um, uh, ha- coming into the same roadblocks over and over and over again, physically, it's because mentally and spiritually, nothing has changed. Nothing changed. So it's not sustainable. You know, it's, it's a whim. It, it's good for a couple of days and then, you know, maybe even a couple of months, I'm able to stay on willpower alone. But then ultimately, you know, it, it fades out and it goes away because I didn't work on this and I didn't work on this. I didn't allow God to work on this and this to change my thoughts, not just towards myself, but towards health and fitness and what it does for me and, and what the principles, what are the biblical principles behind taking care of myself? You know, have you ever thought about that? So I loved this new devotional that I'm holding up. The very first thing that I read in it because she's like, she's challenging that same thought and that same idea. She's saying, okay, you, why, uh, don't you, she says, don't you know that when it's, when it all comes down to it, it's just you, it's all up to you. You know, we, we, we like to think, oh, I just need to get this right program and I need to get that right meal plan and I just need to do it and that's going to fix and solve all my problems. Uh, no, like I need those great tools and those resources. Yes. But if this and this isn't aligned then to actually implement it and stick it out and continue it and progress from that point. I mean, like, what am I going to do after five days of clean eating? What am I going to do after that seven days slim down detox meal plan, right? My mindset hasn't changed. What's going to happen? The same behaviors eventually are going to creep back in. I'm not going to stay with it, right? I mean, it's eventually I'm going to slide right back to where I was If it's not an immediate drop, you know, and, or if that's assuming I even made it through the seven day, you know, because sometimes we sign up for something and we go, oh yeah, this is going to be great. This is just what I need. And then 24, 48, 72 hours into it, we go, hmm, 
You know, this just isn't working for me. You know, I, I, and, and we drop it. Or we even forget about it. Isn't it funny how we can sign up for something and three days later we go, oh yeah, I forgot. I, <laughs> I forgot I was supposed to do this, this, this today for my little challenge that I signed up for, right? So this concept that a physical transformation is only a physical exercise is complete baloney. It's a lie that we tell ourselves and we sell ourselves short, honest to God, because and, and I want to talk about this for a minute. And it's something that she touches on in the Devo that like so rings true with me. And um, I, I love, I love you. And I say this from my heart. Uh, and I, and w if I've ever said this to you, please understand it's because I love you. And, and I get, when I say I get frustrated with it, I believe it's a God ordained frustration uh, uh, that I see an injustice in the world that I truly believe he's put a passion in me to want to help fix <laughs> in some kind of way Be because it's part of my story. So here I am, I am like this devoted mom and I'm all like, okay, so in order to be a good mom, I need to put all my kids' needs ahead of my own. In order to be a good wife, I need to put all my husband's needs ahead of my own. So. Uh, you know, we're building a house right now. It's not really a great time for me to start focusing on my health and fitness. You know, I, uh, you know, my daughter signed up for this extra program. It's not really a great time for me to decide that I need to work out every morning before uh, work or before her school time, right? Um, my, uh, uh, just recently, my, my cat just died, you know? So uh, not really a great time. You know, because my mom, my family is grieving here. My kids are trying to 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 process this, and it hurts me. It hurts. It's hurting them, and it's hurting me to see them hurt. So now just isn't really a good time. I should put all this on hold. I should push it to the back. I should not engage in my daily health habits. I shouldn't worry about working out for 30 minutes a day. I shouldn't worry about eating health, reaching for healthy foods to to feed my body and take care of and we I shouldn't worry about that because it's just physical and I would be selfish and I would be being surface or what's the word you know fit not fake but you know there's a word I can't think of it right now oh vain I would be being vain if I did that right that I mean that's what my thoughts were my thoughts were okay if I'm not giving uh my if I'm not if I'm not basing, okay, like like just what I said, you know, like in order to be a good mom, in order to be a good wife, I have to make sure all their needs are met, you know, to, uh, and, and before I meet my own. I mean, like what is that? That's crap because just like when you're in the airplane and they say you have to put your bag on your face first, then put it on your child the reality is I had to, you know, I had to recognize that what I was actually doing was I was saying, if I, well, if what I was actually doing was I was depriving my kids. I'm pointing upstairs because all my kids are upstairs. I was depriving my kids of the life that I wanted for them because I was not living it myself. More with kids, more is caught than taught. So I can say, eat your protein and your vegetables, and I can say you need to do something more than just lay around all day, but if I'm not living it, they're not gonna catch it. They're not gonna see the true value of it. They're not gonna live it when they get to be my age. And hope to, I hope to God that they start it now, that they don't have all the struggles that I did when you know being raised the way that I was, where I didn't see healthy food, and I didn't see physical, uh, fitness as some, a, 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 a something that contributed to quality of life. It wasn't, you know, like I grew up knowing that money was important, that going, being dependable was important, um, being a good mom was important, making sure that you took care of your family was important. Mm, health and fitness, mm, didn't see that, didn't see that. And so that was an area that I suffered in, I mean, from the time that puberty hit, okay? And it carried it over into my adult 30s and before I did something, before I recognized it as 
not just a physical issue, but a spiritual one. Because there were things that, you know, the negative thoughts, the, the excuses of why those other things were more, I just need to focus on them. I just need to make sure that their needs are met first. No, because if I don't meet my needs, you know, it's that like that saying, like, if I don't fill my cup first, I have nothing to pour out to them, right? So this is why our transformations don't happen is because we have or we have yet to sh shift this and this to be in alignment with what we're doing with our physical bodies. I would challenge you to accept it as truth that this needs to make that shift, that change, that switch in order to have this follow up and for this to happen and stay. Okay. It's not the meal plan. It's not the workout. I mean, yes, they play a role. Okay. We choose those programs based on whatever our physical goals are, right? If I want to, if I, if I know that I want to, um, burn, if I, that, if I know that I want to build muscle, I choose a muscle building program, <laughs> right? I mean, duh. If I know I really enjoy dance, I'm going to pick a dance fitness program, you know, but this, this and this has to also experience a shift and a change. And I see it over and over again. You know, we, we sign up for these challenges. We join these groups. We buy the challenge pack. And we go, it's time for me to make a change. It's time for me to do something about it. I just know it's just time for me to do something about it. And, and, we, and, I, and you know, and I'm here with you. <laughs> I'm your coach. So I'm like, yeah. Whatever pace you're ready to run at or walk at, I'm with you, right? But the people that I see fall off are the ones who, this hasn't shifted. Not yet. Or not fully. Or we, we, we allowed one shift to happen. And so, you know, like we, we get one daily ha new daily habit going. But then eventually there's an opportunity for a new area of growth to happen, a new shift that needs to happen. So like, let's say you, you make your first shift with your mindset toward nutrition and you know, I needed to eat better, right? So the very first thing is, oh, I just, you know, I need to look at portion control. So you just start there. You just start with portion control, okay? Because you had a mental shift with portion control and you had a spirit, so you, you, you allow a spiritual shift to happen with, you know, the thoughts of deprivation and the, the fear of deprivation or the fear of not getting enough to eat or the, you know, all these fears that can be tied to why you never did portion control to begin with, but you engage in it and it makes a huge difference. And, but then like maybe you haven't yet experienced a shift in your mindset when it comes to your workouts. So you're still on the struggle bus with that. And so what happens is that, that area of getting, of doing your workouts and staying committed to your workouts every day doesn't stick. Maybe you actually press play three times a week that, you know, when they're out of three out of five, you know, but then the next week it's two out of five. And then the next week you're like, I haven't even worked out at all this week. What happened? You need to recognize that time, really that struggle as the opportunity to address another area for spiritual and mental growth to happen so that the physical habits of working out every day will follow through. Does that make sense? Give me a thumbs up if that makes sense to you, you know? So, because, because um, ultimately, and I'll bring this home to the whole faith thing, Ultimately, when we are, when we are putting ourselves last, yes, our, you know, I made the tie to our kids, right? I made the tie to it being a, a set, you know, we're selling ourselves short, but we're also selling them short. But ultimately too, we're selling God short. And you're like, what? <laughs> 
But here's the thing. Why did God, why, okay, is God invested in us? Of course he is. He sent his son, Jesus Christ, right? Died on the cross, all that. But why did he do that? Why didn't he just let Jesus stay among us and like live forever? I mean, he could do that. He's God, right? He's almighty. He could have had Jesus come and just stay in the earth with us and just always be here and have him be a prophet for us to watch on TV. <laughs> he could have his own podcast and we could just all as Christians decide to tune into his podcast. But what he realized was, he, in, he realized if he could get him in our hearts, in the word, there's a word, specific word that says I'm going to, it's going to be inscribed. Inscribed is like, you know, like stone. Like when you engrave something in stone, I'm going to inscribe it on your hearts. It's permanent and multiplication happens, right? Because he's not only in one person, he's in everyone. So he's able to reach more of us at once. So when and, and whenever, what's the purpose behind that? The purpose behind him being in us and working directly with our hearts is to transform our hearts, renew our minds day by day as we choose to focus on it and allow him to do that work in us so that we can have the more abundant life that Jesus came to give us that he talked about over and over again. He was like, you know, the kingdom of God is at hand and I want you to live in this now. You know, you don't, you don't have to live in this limited mindset anymore. I mean, over and over again, you see this in the message of, of, that Jesus came and shared in red in your Bible. But what he was doing was he was taking all those red words that we see in the Bible and he was like, I'm going to put those red words here. So I'm a living thing in you and I can talk to you all the time. You can feel me as a presence in your life so that when the time comes, and I say, Angel, it's time to do something about your health and fitness. You'll listen. And we can start to go to work right away. And I'll be, I'll be there for, to help you renew your mind. I'll be there to help you make that spiritual change so that physically you can also get your, get your transformation from cholesterol and blood sugar to inflammation and gut health, to being able to, you know, feel good in your clothes. I mean, I absolutely believe God wants me to feel good in my clothes. He wants me to have an energy level through the roof to where I can go and teach one or two hours a day and still take care of my kids and interact with them and play with them and go out and have relationships with people and spread the love, you know, and be still be a good wife to my husband, if you get what I'm saying. <laughs> so that's, that's at the heart, I believe, of why we don't see transformation, because we haven't allowed that shift to happen here. So that here, we see the shift. When you go to the doctor and get the blood work drawn, you see the shift start to happen. So, I'm going to let you go because it is 1030 and I got to go teach a class and I got to get my shift shop workout in because it's already there. <laughs> and I got to make sure my kids have eaten breakfast if they haven't already. But um, I wanted to let you know whether or not you're doing the shift shop, which is now a new program and we will be, you will see more and more of us doing it in this group. And we are shifting, pun intended, into a new challenge in this group if you want the added one-on-one -on -one accountability and what i mean is i will check to see every day if you have checked a box to say that you drank your shake and you've checked a box to say that you've done your workout then i have a separate app so that you don't even have to log into facebook for it you open it and you say click click yes i drank my shake yes i did my workout and then when if i don't because we all need extra accountability. We all need extra help making sure that we don't let those behaviors slide. So we are doing the physical part with the mental and the spiritual in order to make the transformation happen. All you got to do is keep an eye out for the email that I'm going to be sending you. Everyone in here should receive that email this weekend. I'll be sending it out. 
But make sure that you comment below or you private message me if you just want to make sure that you're in that app, okay? And that you don't miss the email, okay? So I will know to make sure to follow up with you. And I will partner with you. I will go that extra mile for you and help you. So in this Faith for Fitness group, we'll be tackling that, that, uh, that spiritual reset, that spiritual shift, as well as the mental shift. And then in the tracker app, that extra added accountability to help you with the physical shift, okay? So just make sure that I know that you're ready for the shift, okay? All right, I love you guys. Go back to the beginning and listen if you can, and I'll check in with you guys again later. Love you guys, bye, have a great day.